Hello everyone, welcome to Dental Education Hub YouTube channel. Today we are going to study the morphology of the deciduous mandibular canine. So what we are going to cover in this video lecture, we are going to cover the chronology or the timeline of development of the mandibular deciduous canine. We will study uh, the number of this tooth in three different tooth numbering systems. And we will study the landmarks that are present on the deciduous mandibular canine. So watch this lecture till the end. So the calcification of mandibular deciduous canine, it begins before birth. So at the age of 17th week in utero, the calcification of the mandibular deciduous canine, it begins. The crown is completed by the age of nine months after birth. This tooth emerge into the oral cavity by the age of 20 months. The root it is completed after three years and the tooth it is lost by the process of exfoliation by the age of nine years and at this age the tooth it is replaced by a permanent canine. In the universal numbering system, the numbers, uh, the alphabet, the first alphabet, it, it begins with the right maxillary second molar. And the, the alphabet, they continue in a clockwise direction. So the number, uh, the alphabet that is used for the mandibular deciduous canine of the left side is M. And in a clockwise direction, the, num the alphabet that is used for the, le the right mandibular canine is R. The alphabet that is used for the deciduous mandibular canines in the Palmer notation system. So in the Palmer notation system, the alphabets, they start from the midline, similarly in the maxillary arch. So the alphabet for the canines R C. The only difference is this symbol. This symbol indicates that the tooth is of the mandibular arch and it is of the left quadrant. So C for the left side and also C for the right side. This, this symbol indicates that it is a mandibular quadrant of the right side. So C. Now, in the FTI notation system, the numbers, the, the numbers, they also begin from the midline. So, the number for the left mandibular canine is 7-3. So, 7 is the left mandibular quadrant and 3 is the tooth number. So, the complete number is 7-3 and 7-3 means that it is a mandibular canine of the left quadrant let's move here so it is a mandibular canine of the right quadrant and the number is 83 83 indicate that the 8 it indicates that it is a it is of right mandibular quadrant and 3 is the tooth number so 83 mean it is a mandibular canine of the right quadrant so let's discuss the morphology of this tooth from the labial aspect. So the crown and the root, uh, both are shorter in length. So the crown and the root, they are shorter in length as compared to the maxillary canine. So they are slightly shorter. This is the cusp tip. So the cusp tip is more towards the mesial side. So more, it, the cast tip is more towards the mesial side and because of this uh, mesial shift of the cast tip, the distal cuspal slope, this is the distal cuspal slope and it is longer than the mesial cuspal slope. So the opposite is true for the maxillary canine in which the distal cuspal slope is shorter this cusp, and the mesial cuspal slope was larger. So this, the distal cuspal slope is larger here as compared to the mesial cuspal slope. So this is the cervical, this area is the cervical ridge and this cervical ridge is not very pronounced. 
as compared to the maxillary canine. So this is a single conical root. Uh, the tooth, it has a single conical root and in the apical part, there's a slight curvature of the root towards the distal side. So let's study this tooth from the lingual aspect. So from the lingual aspect, the cingulum and the marginal ridges, they are less developed. So this is the cingulum of the tooth and this is the mesial marginal ridge and this raised area this is the distal marginal ridge. So these ridges, they are less pronounced in the mandibular canine. Similarly, in the center, there's another ridge, sometimes referred as the lingual ridge or the longitudinal ridge. So this ridge is also not very well developed. Because these ridges and the landmarks present on the lingual side, they are not well developed, therefore, the lingual surface is smooth and the fossae, these two fossae, this is the mesial fossa and this is the distal fossa. So these fossa are shallow, so they are not very deep because of the less development of these raised areas. The crown and the root, they taper towards the lingual side. So you can see part of the mesial side and part of the distal aspect from the lingual side. So from the mesial aspect, the labiolingual dimension, it is less. So this is the labiolingual dimension. So overall, the labiolingual dimension, whether from the mesial side or the distal side, it is less. So as compared to the maxillary canine. So these are the cervical ridges, both on the labial side and on the lingual side. So this cervical ridge, ridges, they are less prominent as compared to the maxillary counterpart. So this is the root surface and the root surface from the mesial aspect, it is smooth with no prominent developmental depression. So from the distal aspect, so the distal, from the distal aspect, the difference is the, the curvature of the cervical line. So this curvature of the cervical line, it is less as compared to the curvature that is present on the mesial side. Now the root of the tooth uh, from the distal aspect, the root, it has a developmental depression over here. So the root, it has a developmental depression on the distal aspect. Otherwise, uh, the tooth, it is more similar to that from the mesial aspect. So the labial lingual dimensions, it is slightly less as compared to the maxillary canine. So the, these dimensions, they are slightly few millimeter less. So the labial surface, it is convex and it is convex mainly at the cervical third of the crown. So this surface, it is more convex. So this portion is the cusp tip. So the cusp tip is more towards the mesial side. And this is the cusp tip and it is more towards the mesial side. So the lingual aspect of this tooth from the occlusal aspect, it appears more smooth and less convex at the cervical third because of the less development of, as already described, because of the less development of the marginal ridges, the lingual ridge and the cingulum. So it appears more smooth as compared to the maxillary canine. So thank you very much for watching this lecture. Uh, do visit our Instagram page for questions, images, and flashcards. Thank you very much for watching this lecture. Stay blessed.